Hello. Today I'd like to talk to you about CA Technologies Integrated Continuous Delivery Ecosystem and the products that make up that ecosystem. Uh, and we'll also show you a demonstration of all these products working together. Um, you can see here, here's the, the overview of the ecosystem. So at the top of the, the picture on the right hand side, you can see where our requirements are gathered. Uh, we use the Agile requirement designer to then improve those requirements and to build out our test cases before then driving the continuous delivery chain through our automation tools and our service virtualization and testing tools. And you'll see all this as part of our demonstration. So let's start with the requirements. So we're looking at Agile Central here, uh, and this is the dashboard of our project, our medical record app project. Uh, on the screen, we've got details like the test cases, the status of those test cases, along with our user stories. So we're gonna start with uh, this simple user story here, user story 57, that's just been created. Uh, and you can see it's got very simple requirements. And what we're gonna show you is how we can take these requirements and import them into the Agile Requirement Designer to then create the fully featured requirements. So this is Agile Requirements Designer, and we've started with an empty flow. And what we're gonna do is import the details from Agile Central. So on the left-hand side, we have these connectors. Uh, these are the connectors for the products we support. And we're gonna start with the Agile Central connector. We log in. And the first thing you're gonna see on the top right-hand side of the screen, here's the workspace for my login user. Here's the projects that you just saw. And you can see that that's the user story we just looked at. And we drag that into the requirements designer. And automatically, we'll then generate a basic requirements document, as you can see here. So here we have the basics. We've actually linked it together. And at this point, the business teams and the testing teams will take this data to build out the full test cases. And I'm going to show you an example here. So here's an example of uh, one that's done earlier. Uh, and this is our flow. So we've actually gone through the requirements and built a fully featured requirements uh, along with all the steps required to do testing. Now the requirements designer product then lets us look at this and look at the optimum testing. So if we go to the path explorer and I click there, we can see that uh, currently we have this number of tests that are the optimum number of testing. If I change the view to show all tests, you see there's much more to to do a complete test, we have 18 tests that we can run. However, if we say we just want to do the maximum coverage, all the edges, we can get that down to six. So this is the, the best coverage testing for this requirement. And what we're going to show is how we can take this data and import it back into Agile Central. So we're going to take a couple of these test cases. We're going to save them. And then what we're going to do is uh, export them. Now, at this point, we can actually look at more details about the test cases. Uh, we can include the automation. So we can actually generate the automation scripts as part of this in the requirements designer. Uh, but we're going to just take these requirements and attach them back to the user story in Agile Central. So we say the test cases. Uh, that's the user story you're working on in Agile Central. And we click OK. And now we're exporting these test cases and attaching them back to the Agile Central user story. And we now switch to look at the Agile Central to see those user stories. So if we go back to Agile Central, as we can see here, if we drill into that user story and we scroll down, we'll now see we've got two test cases attached to this user story. So here's our two test cases. Um, on the right hand side, you can see details like the last verdict is the last output from the test. So the test doesn't run, which is why it says blocked. Also, there's been no build or last run date. So you, you'll see this updated as we go through the demonstration when we automatically run the test cases. Now what we're going to do is we're going to first um, act as though we're like a product owner. And the first thing to do is schedule this user story. So we're going to schedule it into release 2.3. And then we'll show how this data can then be used by the release teams as they're planning their releases within the environment. So if we switch our personas, we're now looking at the, the CDE product, which is used by the release teams as they're planning their releases. Uh, on the dashboard, we've got lots of information about the environment, uh, how much of our tasks are automated, how much time we're spending in manual tasks. For each of the releases, how long we spend in each environment as manual and automated, any long running tasks up here, and also any tasks that are pending for the logged in user. 
Now we're going to go and look at the release for our demonstration, which is this MedRec release. And on this screen, we've got various lots of data. So on the left hand side, uh, these are the applications when deployed. So we have a physician application and we have the MedRec application. So for this release, we need to deploy two applications. Uh, the data here is actually coming from Agile Central. So if I refresh this, you'll see that user story we just added to that release. Now automatically our release teams can see that that has been scheduled into the release that we're working on on this screen. Now these pillars are actually the, the phases, the environments we're going to deploy into. So we go left to right. So we deploy first into to the development environment. When that completes, we'll go to QA and then up through UAT, pre-production and production. And the way that the, the CDE product works is we will start this phase and then all the tasks inside this phase need to be completed before we can promote into the next phase. Now, before we do that, we're going to look at the application we're going to use as part of our demonstration. So the application I'm going to show is based on WebLogic and is the MedRec application, which comes in two parts. We have the MedRec application and the Physician application, which uses web services to query the MedRec application. The data is stored in an Oracle database. And as part of our demonstration, what we're going to do is first refresh the application. So take the new builds and deploy them to WebLogic. Uh, we'll also generate synthetic data for our testing in the Oracle database. And also we're going to uh, create a virtual service that simulates the MedRec application so we can test the physician application in isolation and then obviously run all our tests and make sure those tests are complete. Now this is the actual application we're going to use and one of the changes we've made is we put the build number on the screen so you, as we go through the demonstration you'll see us updating the build number. Uh, and also as we log in to the admin screen, uh, this is the patient data. And if we look at this data, this is going to be synthetically generated as we go for the demonstration. So now we're actually start our deployment. So we're going to deploy into the development environment and we do this from Jenkins. So let's go to Jenkins. Here's our project. And you can see the last build was build 301, which I've just shown you on the application server. And we're going to start the build now. So the build will create the build for the WebLogic application and update the build number inside the web, that landing page we saw. And if I go back to the CDE product, we'll see first thing is uh, we've got this marker that tells us what build we're deploying. We're deploying a virtual service. So this is this MedRec virtual service. And also we're deploying some Docker to run the tests and we're generating data. So while that data has been generated, let me show you the, the Docker environment. So you can see here, we've just spun up uh, Selenium Grid to run the testing. And if I go to the virtual service, uh, this is our virtual service we've started. You can see it started a few seconds ago. Uh, and that, this will be used for the testing when we test the physician application. If we go back to the CD product, you'll see that we've now nearly finished the, the loading of the test data. So th what we're doing here is we're synthetically generating that patient data. Uh, we're also taking a subset of that data to use as part of our testing at the end of the process. Uh, when this is complete, we can then move on. So these are all grouped together so they can run together. When they complete, we can then move on to the next step. And you see these are separate because they have to be run separate. Uh, the first thing we're doing is deploying the WebLogic application. And if I hit refresh on here, what you'll see is uh, that application is now offline because the upgrade actually takes it offline and puts it back online. In production, we'd work with clusters and this wouldn't go offline. But for demonstration, it shows that we've taken that application offline. And you can see here that application has been refreshed with build 302. And if I go and look at the patient data that we looked at a minute ago, you'll see we've now got all new patient data. And we'll come back to this at the end of the testing. Now, we deployed the WebLogic app, the MedRec app. We're deploying the Physician app now. When these two apps are in place, uh, our infrastructure is ready. The applications are deployed. We have our virtual environments. And then we can go on to do our automated testing. So we have various tests we need to run. If I go back to our portal and look at our testing and just refresh this screen. Um, we actually run three tests. So uh, this test ran and completed very quickly, test 73. Uh, test 74 is just starting. <coughs> this takes uh, a few seconds. Uh, that one's just completed. And then we also run another test, which is running now. <coughs> now this test is gonna exercise the virtual service. And if I come and refresh this screen, you'll see that this count goes up 
because we've now it shows that we're exercising this virtual service that we provision. So we now know that, as you can see here, those tests have all passed. <laughs> now, test case 74 actually was using Selenium and it was using the data that came from the test data management tool. So if I drill down into here, you'll see this user, uh, this user was created and used as part of the testing. So if we go back to our, our app server, there's the user and there's the data. Now the data has been synthetically generated in that we've taken the first name, the last name, combined it into an email address <coughs> and also made sure things like the gender is consistent with the first name. Now, when that's, those tests are all completed, um, but they actually post their results to Agile Central. <coughs> and we have a step here that actually checks, did all the test cases for the user stories that we care about complete? And if they did, we carry on, which they did. At which point we can then deprovision the environment. So deprovision the virtual service and the Docker environment. So if we go back to here and look at our virtual service and just refresh this screen, we'll see that virtual service is gone. And if we go to the Docker environment and again, just refresh this, you'll see that those containers we created for testing have also gone. So we've now completed that phase, that Jenkins build has been deployed and tested, and we're ready now to promote it. But before we do that, let me show you in Agile Central, um, the results of those test cases. So uh, this user story is the one that we just tested. And we can see that test case 73, we can see the last build that passed, which is build 302. Uh, we see what type ran, what the output was, and also we have a link back to the app test tool to look at the PDF. So if this test had failed, we can access those test results <coughs> from the Agile Central product. Now at this point, we can actually decide if we are happy with this build, we can promote this build. Now we have a manual step. Uh, this is purely for demonstration. We could automatically promote if we wanted to, but we're going to actually release this. And automatically what happens is We've now promoted build 302 into QA. And you see here, we've now gone through the next, taken that exact same deployment, but we're deploying it into our QA environment. And we go through very similar steps in the deployment of the application, deployment of the virtual service, creation of the test data. We do additional testing. So in the QA environment, we do different functional testing. And also we've integrated into our Blaze Meter performance testing tool to also run performance testing. And if I go to uh, Agile Central, we can look at the, the user story for the performance testing here. Now the performance testing takes uh, a few minutes to run, uh, but we have some samples here of previous tests. So we can see here that 301, we saw the test ran several times, and we have a link to the BlazeMeter report that then takes you to the output from that performance testing and shows you um, how many errors we had and exactly what was done as part of that performance test. Now the automation we just saw was actually running in release automation, which is the screen you see here. And we can see the blaze meter job is still running there. Now the actual definition of what was required is all configured inside release automation. So if we come down to here, we can see that in the app test part of the screen, uh, these are all the tests that need to be run. So you add the test case here and automatically those tests will run for this application in this environment. The same with the virtual service. We can see which virtual service needs to be started and the details for that. And also with the test data. So what test data we need to build in this environment. And if I go and look at QA, what you'll see is things like the app test, we have one test we run, whereas in the development we ran multiple tests. I hope you found this demonstration of CA's end-to-end -end continuous delivery solution helpful and interesting. As a leader in continuous delivery, CA is the only company capable of providing the level of integration you saw in the demonstration just now. If you'd like to get more information on any of the products you saw in the demonstration, please don't hesitate to contact CA through your account representative or by visiting one of the links on the slide.